<laughs> Happy October 3rd early. Right? Right? To honestly, do you ever get tired of those clips? Okay, here's the deal. Like, I don't know what it's like to go to a Starbucks and not have the person write Aaron Samuels on your cup and hand it to you. Like, I don't know what that's like. I, I always say, I don't remember what it's like before Aaron Samuels. So as much, you know, it's, it's been around a long time, but at the same time, it's, it's a movie that brings so many people such joy and happiness. Like, it's, no one ever s says, oh, you were in Mean Girls. They're like, oh, you were in Mean Girls. You know what I mean? They, it, it brings so much happiness. So as much as you get sick of it, it still makes people happy. So I love it. Did you just see Tina Fey grilling Mariah Carey on it, quizzing her? She got everything. Nailing right. it. OK, so here's my Mariah Carey, my Mariah Cara, Mariah Carey story. I am obsessed with her. And she's like the biggest Mean Girls fan in the world, as you can see. So when she did New Year's Eve in Times Square, I was hosting New Year's Eve in Times Square as well. And I knew she had just done a movie with Lacey Chabert, who does all the Hallmark movies with me. And she obviously Lacey's Gretchen Wieners and Mean Girls. And her and Mariah worked together and I knew Mariah was gonna be walking by my trailer. So when I saw her, I wanted to get a picture, but I didn't know how to get a hold of her, like how to get her attention. So the only thing I could think to scream, and James, my boyfriend's gonna be so embarrassed of me when I tell this story, but whatever. I literally go, I was in Mean Girls to <laughs> Mariah Carey in Times Square on New Year's Eve. <laughs> like I scream it at the top of my lungs. And then to make it worse, I go, I know Lacey Chabert. <laughs> <laughs> Did she turn around and take the- No, F no, she kept walking. Like she, I don't think she heard me, but every, I was like, well, that was my moment to get a picture and I guess it's gone. <laughs> This, was this the same New Year's Eve that she needed the hot tea? Remember that she one? She might have been. She might have been focused on something else. Yeah. Maybe she got so starstruck by me, and she was like, "I can't even focus. I don't know. I don't know." But I love her, and I think she's fantastic, and I'm obsessed with the fact that she loves Mean Girls because I'm obsessed with her. So, what about your cookbook inspired by Mean Girls? Scott and I have a drink. What did you send our way? Well, hold on. Let me move it because right now it's holding my computer up because I'm a man of a certain age. So, um. This is the, uh, the Burn Cookbook, which is a Mean Girls-inspired parody cookbook for Mean Girls fans, unauthorized, unofficial, legally, we have to say that. It, you are drinking the Frosé Rosé cocktail from the Burn Cookbook, because we have an amazing cocktail chapter in the book that is, you know, appropriately titled, Happy Hour is from four to six, and we have everything from the two gay to function Cosmo to the half a virgin pina colada, then we have these amazing appetizers and dishes. One of my favorite things in the book to make and people just get such a kick out of is we have pigs in a blanket, but we call them Gretchen's wieners. Gretchen's Fetch Yeah, fettuccine Alfredo instead of fettuccine. Like so many fun things. There's games, there's quizzes in the book. You can get the book, make the cocktails, make the food, you know, have your friends over or do it on Zoom, watch the movie, relive some of your favorite moments and just have a great night. It's the perfect like, Girls' Night In book, you know? Let me tell you this. <clears throat> this drink, this is, whoever's in this is booze is strong. <laughs> I mean. This up. Woo! That'll put some hair on your chest. Woo! <laughs> or somewhere else. <laughs> I mean, you what? never know. Uh, Halloween Wars is coming back. What can we expect? Because you always bring it back bigger and better. Oh, my gosh. OK, let me just tell you this. We are, we are 10 seasons deep in this show, and by the 10th season, I got to say, we've gotten it right. It is so amazing. We have the biggest displays and the best tasty treats that you have ever seen on the show in 10 seasons. Because every year, the competition gets bigger and better. So our contestants, every year, have to come up with new things that are bigger and better than they've ever had before. Bring them to the Halloween War stage and battle it out. And you're going to see in this finale the biggest Halloween displays we have ever seen in 10 seasons of Halloween Wars. Woo! Well, man, you keep leveling up, right? So you also, this uh, Hallmark movie that's it's about to be released, bitch. right? It's the first LGBTQ plus uh, Hallmark movie, a holiday movie released. This is, a, this is a big deal because it's like, we were talking about representation. We were also talking about ownership, right? And, and standing in your truth in these kinds of stories and this kind of stuff. What was it like for you to be a part of this? Oh, man. It, I mean, when I say there are no words, 
I literally mean there are no words. It, Aww. it is for Hall, Hallmark to step up this way and just make the holiday table bigger and more welcoming than ever is a huge deal. And it, it just, it's, I just applaud them so much. And it, it's this Christmas, maybe there'll be little 10 year old Jonathan's in Ohio that will feel a little less scared right this Christmas, maybe a little more seen, and they might have a better holiday because of this. And that's what our, my hope is for it. And I can't wait. We're going to come back and talk to you guys about, a lot about this in November. But it's a big deal. You, you talk about this holiday season. This is going to be you and your boyfriend James's first holiday season we in love your James. brand new house. Woo! You guys love James Vaughn. I love James Vaughn. There we are. Access, access is James Vaughn. Right there, ladies and gentlemen. Well, here's the thing. We, we, we bought our first house together, so we're taking the big, you know, taking the big moves, doing the, uh, the big boy moves together, which has been really exciting. And also the cool thing is the, when I met James, the last place I was was with you, Kit, before I met James Vaughn. I'd like to think that I was the catalyst. <laughs> you, you are, because we, we, I was on your show, and we were doing Halloween Wars press. And then my final interview of the day, I had to go over to Celebrity Page and get interviewed by, as I said, who's James Vaughn? What is this? I, I knew the show, but I, I didn't really know. So as I'm looking him up, I look on his Instagram and I was like, oh my gosh, he's adorable. And then he's like, LGBTQ. And I was like, wait, I'm there. That's us meeting at the Grove for him to interview me for his show. So the last place I was before James Vaughn came into my life was on your show in that room right there. How funny is that? Right, and that picture looks like a Hallmark movie. It does. That's right? Full so, circle. Well, uh, no, wait, Kit, Kit, is it just me? He said boyfriend, but does he not have on a wedding band? Are you married? <laughs> this, no. OK, no, 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 I'm not. This is, this is a wedding ring. We're, I'm on my lunch break for the movie. I mean, Victoria shooting the Hallmark movie, and I'm married in the movie. So I'm on my lunch break, hence the full hair and makeup ran home to do these interviews and now I have to go back. So I didn't yeah. want to take this off here because I would lose it. But no, this is for the movie, not real life. <laughs> when you and James tie the knot, we are ready. We'll, let, we'll give you the exclusive. Thanks. Really, we're so happy for you with everything you got going Indeed. on. Thank you.